Hello, it is Thursday, December 23rd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Today is a Thursday puzzle. The first tricky puzzle of the week, as I often think about it, the typically a themed puzzle with a theme that's a bit unusual or ambitious or has some kind of complex mechanic. Perhaps we'll have a rebus today, a rebus being uh, the mechanic by which you enter more than one letter into a given cell. I don't know. I'm not making a prediction. I'm just just thinking aloud. Anyway, uh, today's episode of The Daily Solve is very kindly supported by Joe Percy, Joseph Straubach, Overfull Hitbox, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to your gener- for your generous support as benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And in, in addition to that benefit, you can find months of uh, daily, uh, not daily, but months of bonus uh, video solves of all different types of crosswords, the weekly speed solve, the um, monthly New York Times bonus puzzles, um, roundup of daily solve community created crosswords made in the daily solve discord chat server, which you can also join. And links to both of those are in the description field underneath the video. Anyway, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle before moving on to today's. Um, We uh, had an explanation from Yakushi about the walkie-talkie frequency band, which which was UHF, which I guessed was ultra-high frequency, and Yakushi confirms it does indeed stand for ultra-high frequency and is the range between 300 megahertz and 3 gigahertz. The other ranges have equally uncreative names, VLF, LF, MF, HF, VHF, UHF, SHF, and EHF. So there we go. Kathy Swope confirms that otitis is indeed an inflammation of the inner, middle, or outer ear, often with an infection and inevitably symptomatic at 2 a.m. in a toddler. And uh, let's see. Brian says Angie is the 1973 song by the Rolling Stones. I'm sure you're familiar with it. I probably am. I can't bring it to mind off the top of my head, but I've probably heard it. And Charles Martinez, I don't know why this wasn't more obvious to me at the time, but he explains that A is E-H, that is, A-E-H, is a Canadian reference generally, not a language reference. It's a stereotype of Canadians ending questions with A, famously satirized in Bob and and Doug McKenzie's skit, A, hoser? And uh, so I I was really, because the clue involved Quebec, I was really focused on trying to think, is this some kind of French Canadian uh, saying? But no, of course, it's an incredibly commonly referenced stereotype about Canadians generally. And George Adams does point out, A does exist in standard French, but it's not used the same way as in English. Um, For example, A bien, E-H space B-I-E-N, means well. And um, anyway... I, I, that was a that was a silly oversight on my part. So thanks to those who chipped in. There was more more discussion about that in the comments if you're interested in, in following up on it. Okay, so all that said, I think we may as well continue on to today's puzzle, the Thursday puzzle. This was constructed by Stephen McCarthy, relatively um, uh, relatively new constructor. Uh, this is his uh, third puzzle in the New York Times, and his first was earlier this year. So um, not a debut, but but a um, a relatively young New York Times crossword career. And edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get going. Okay. When said three times, how an overlong comment might be summarized. Could be the word blah, 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 blah. Tries to wrangle the unwranglable. I don't know. Is that wrangle is with, I don't know, a horse or a bull or something? Black-eyed pea, technically. A, a bean, perhaps. And to get ready to skate with up could be lace up. You could lace up your skates. And lead into a southern ville. Oh, um, oh, I see. So maybe the name of a city. Could it be Asheville? Maybe? Let's check the crosses on that. To let up, yeah, to let up is to ease. And here we have reef deposit hung on the holiday tree. 
reef deposit. What on earth is that? <laughs> no idea what a reef deposit is. Okay. Is unobliged to... Oh, I see. So you're you're unobliged to do the New York Times crossword every day. You need not. Oh, wait, no. Maybe not. I thought that would be needs not, but I did Oh, Oh, no, need not. I see. Right. You need not. Not needs not. You need not complete the New York Times crossword puzzle every day, but but uh, maybe we do it anyway. To gobble down could be snap up, maybe, or I'm not sure. I, I can see things that fit in <laughs> in uh, five letters or seven letters. I'm not seeing much that fits in six. All right. What was this again? Try, tries to wrangle the unwranglable. Head. I'm not sure. All right. What about this? Christ's entry into Brussels in 1889. Artist. I am not sure offhand. Um, ba, ba, ba. Let's go back up to the... Let's go just march through our acrosses. Morgan Stanley acquisition of 2020. Well, I don't know. Would this be a bank or something? I'm not sure. Shock in a way. I don't know. It could be awe. Shock and awe. Free fall phenomenon informally. Oh, oh, I see. So this is zero G, the, the sensation of being in zero gravity. And then shock in a way would be zap zap to shock with a taser or something, I guess. North and south, but not east or west. Ah, so north and south are poles, whereas there is no east pole or west pole. I suppose there... No, no, there wouldn't be because north and south are magnetic poles. There is no equivalent with east or west. All right. Word aptly hidden... Word apt... Word. Word aptly hidden in I've got this. I see. So you can see that in the words, I've got this, if you take the E from I've and continue on, you get the word ego, the G-O from got. And so I suppose the aptness is that saying, I've got this, uh, reflects one's faith in oneself, one's ego. Good thing to bring to the field. You could bring your A game to the field, that would be good. And beats out, could be edges out. Chicago Airport Code. Ah, oh, this is one of those strange ones. So Chicago O'Hare International Airport, its airport code is ORD. And I'm sure there's a reason for that. There's a reason for all of those airport codes, but I don't know what that one is off the top of my head. Maybe someone will tell me in a comment. I bet they will. Popular web browser is uh, Google Chrome, of course, what I'm using right now to solve this crossword. Uh, does some cave art... Well, it probably ends in an S, doesn't it? Does some cave art. Oh, etches? No, that, that, that's too, um, too few letters. What about this? 45 EG. I don't know. 45 record? I can't think what would fit there. 45. 45 degree angle is acute. I'm not sure. What about this? Get something just right. Get something just right. It could be nail it, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Let's keep looking around. Reef deposit. <laughs> so curious about this reef deposit thing. What is that? Hung on the holiday tree. I don't know. And there's a question mark. So there is some sort of pun, but I'm, I'm very sorry if this if I'm missing something very clear. I, I always worry about that. Something an Australian might throw on the Barbie. I guess a shrimp. It's the thing that sort of that weird phrase people always, speaking of stereotypical national associations, uh, put, put another shrimp on the Barbie, I guess. Anyway, blank shot. All right, let's, let's try and confirm or deny shrimp here. Four could be pro as in pro uh, in an argument, pro and con. And more ragged could be, what, nattier maybe, or rattier? Oh, the cer certain international soccer championship familiar would be the Euros, the Euro um, tournament. And, oh, mugshot, a mugshot, the headshot taken when someone is booked into, when someone's been arrested. 
All right, noble gas you can't live without. Uh, well, argon looks like it fits at the end here. Noble gas you can't live without. There's going to be some sort of, this is going to be some kind of pun-based theme, it seems. Here we have Kiss Her Blank For Me, a Holly Jolly Christmas lyric. Kiss Me Once, Kiss Her Once For Me, I suppose. That sounds sort of familiar. I can't bring the song to mind entirely, but that sounds plausible. Word with candy or ball. Not sure offhand. And then Western Gas Brand. Oh, Arco? Is Arco? Gasoline Brand? And then what? what is this? Occasion on which to sing the hymn, Up from the Grave He Arose. That certainly sounds Easter related, doesn't it? So let's try that. And then Gobble, oh, gobble down is inhale. I see. There we go. Yes, you really inhaled that food. You gobbled it down. Okay, so what do we have here? At all. I assume this will be something that would fit if you were to say, that doesn't work at all. Or there isn't anyone here at all. But for some reason, I can't bring it to mind. Organization that gives out gold but fights pirates. Um, the RIAA, the Recording industry association of america or something like that uh they issue um gold and platinum records and that sort of thing and also try to um counter the effects of uh music piracy i guess all right teeny tiny could be itsy and things caught at a beach you could catch some rays of sun Oh, I see. Noble gas you can't live without. Vital ar oh, vital argon. I see. So, oops. So we're we're switching some uh, some vowels around in this case. We we take the or we take the um, I don't know common phrase vital organ, and we switch it around to make vital argon. A noble gas you can't live without. All right. So there will be something. Oh, reef deposit hung on the holiday tree. So a reef is made of coral. So we can fill probably coral in at the end of this clue. And then, oh, does some cave art, etches. Oh, boy, I'm, <laughs> okay. Etches, I thought of etches, and then I completely erroneously thought it wouldn't, it wasn't the proper number of letters. Why did I think that? Oh, well, I, I did a poor job of uh, mentally imagining entering that word in my head. That was, that was silly. Okay, get something just right. So it could could end in it with that etches, and there would be an I here. So 45 EG. Oh, a disc. I see. It is a record. Okay. It's a it's a vinyl record, a disc. There we go. Okay. There's something very loud outside. Sorry, I'm sorry if that's coming through. I assume it's a truck or something. Okay. Um Oh, didn't look at this. Heath genus, that's also a woman's name. Um, Heath, so some kind of plant, I guess. Oh, at all would be ever, of course. Yes. This didn't happen at all. This didn't happen ever. So Erica, perhaps? And what is this? Oh, I see. Tries to wrangle the unwranglable. Herds cats. So that, that's a common phrase. It's like herding cats. It's like trying to manage a completely untenable situation. And so here we have, oh, a Christmas, oh, I see, a Christmas carol. And that's why we had a holiday tree in the clue, because we, as opposed to, for instance, Christmas tree, because we wouldn't want to, um, you're never going to repeat a word from the clue in the answer. It's just something to keep in mind. So if you find yourself thinking, this sounds like a reasonable answer, but it shares a word, it's almost certainly not correct. Oh, oh, wait, Christ's entry into Brussels in 1889, Enzor. Um, was indeed a Belgian artist, and so Christ's entry into Brussels in 1889, that sounds, that sounds plausible. James Enzor. And get something just right. Yeah, okay, so with that N, it probably is nail it. And in the way of could be Allah, so in the style of something, Allah, borrowed from French. And blank shot, rim shot, um, often erroneously used to refer to that um, pattern that a drummer might play to emphasize a joke, the sort of boom, people often refer to that as a rim shot, but it's not. I don't know why that's, that's 
for some reason that sort of caught on. I, I guess maybe at this point, linguistically, if people use it enough, it actually does become essentially correct language. But uh, a rim shot is um, when the drummer plays the actual rim of a drum, generally a snare drum, but it actually doesn't occur in that bumpsh thing. Okay, Morgan Stanley acquisition of 2020 must be E-Trade, the investment, the online investment firm. All right, there we go. And more raggedy, ah, tattier, there we go. Not one of my guesses, but a better one than any of the things I said. Okay. So we've cleaned up roughly the top half of the grid. Here we have word with candy or ball. Why do I not see what that is? That's annoying. Starbucks order for a man's man. Um, I don't know. Coffee, cafe. Let's see in the E there look like it will be coffee or cafe. By cafe, I mean the cafe latte, that kind of thing. Um, old timey agreements. Eyes, maybe? A A Y S. We have agreements, plural. So the word itself, I assume, needs to fit in two cells. Okay. Like Santa in traditional depictions, I suppose fat. And I say that also because it, it fits in this coffee situation here, coffee or cafe. Um, butter up, say, could be flatter, and that would also help spell what I'm looking for here. And here we have true. True could be loyal. I mean, true means uh, obviously accurate, but it can also mean someone is true to somebody else. They're loyal to somebody. And so that does look like it could be A or I, A Y S here. So sugar or flour, uh, starch, I suppose each of those is a starch and to give a buzz is to ring or dish that may be served folded. An omelet or what? Here we have oh, that word of candy ball that's going to haunt me until the end of this puzzle. District of Columbia advocacy subject. Oh, statehood, presumably. Uh, oh, so maybe, maybe this isn't starch. I guess, yeah, sugar isn't a starch, is it? What is this? Anyway, um, District of Columbia an unusual part of the United States in that it is not part of a state. And so its, its residents don't have all of the rights that residents of states have. And so there is a long, very, very longstanding campaign to make the District of Columbia a state. Okay, word with candy or ball. Oh, cotton. There we go. Okay, good. Didn't haunt me till the end, fortunately. So cotton candy or cotton ball. There we go. And what about this? Hankering. Could be an itch. You could have an, an itch for some cotton candy, a hankering for some cotton candy. And New York City neighborhood next to the Bowery, Soho. And... Oh, I see. Cafe Macho. All right. The Starbucks order for a man's man is Cafe Macho, as opposed to uh, Cafe Mocha. There we go. So we've switched the O and the A. Are we switching the O and the A everywhere, actually? I think we are. Vital organ to argon and a Christmas choral to carol. So it's not just that we're uh, switching two letters or even just two vowels. We are specifically switching the O and the A. So I assume we will get a revealer at some point that will reference that. Okay. Oh, sorry. Not Soho. Noho, I guess. Sorry about that. New York, neighbor, New York City neighborhood. Uh, sort of embarrassing mistake, given that I'm in New York right now. So it's one for 90 degrees, the sign. I never actually remember what those are. Um, <laughs> haven't really had to deal with that since trigonometry class many, many, many years ago, but it must be the sign. And then great, 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 great grandfather of Noah. Uh, it must be Enos. And the essential character the ethos, I suppose. Oh, so the dish that must be served folded is an omelet. What did I have that made me think it wasn't? Oh, right. I had this starch, this sugar or flour, which was sort of silly in retrospect. 
So what is this actually? Oh, they're staples. Each of those is a staple. And of course, as an or clue, sugar or flour, um, we're not, even though there are two of them, we're only referring to either one. So it's singular. Okay. Oh, to give a buzz, I see. To phone somebody, to give them a buzz. And here we have a Miami 5. The Heat, the Miami Heat, is that a basketball team? Does that work? Let's try it. Be smirches, could be tars. You could be smirch somebody's good name. You could tar their good name. And all right, not going to scroll down because I see that the clue is at the top of the page. What sinophobia is the fear of? Oh, I don't know. Opposite of exo could be endo or ecto. Either way, it probably ends with o. Trash day reminder could be an odor. Um, and so endo in this case. What is ecto? I can't remember. Someone will tell me now that I've said it aloud. Uh, full of anticipation. Um, not sure. Here we have, oh, here we have another. Oh, so maybe we don't have a revealer. Buys tickets for a couple of friends for a Polynesian getaway. Okay, well, it could end in Tonga, in Polynesia. And so, oh, tango. That would be tango if we were... were um, switched the order of the O and the A, or the positions of the O and the A, I should say. So that would make this, it takes two to Tonga. Oh no, that doesn't, it's too many letters. So maybe just takes two, oh, I see. Buys tickets, not, right, okay. So you're buying the ticket, you're taking two to Tonga. Takes two to Tonga, there we go, very clever. And here we have question marks, question, or sorry, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Could be OMG in sort of text language. And a new citizen, perhaps, could be an emigre. And a historical event, given its current name in 1939. Ah, World War I, I suppose, the Great War, which in retrospect became World War I once there was a second World War. Oh. Sorry, there's a very loud sound. It's pr oh, it stopped. Okay. <laughs> Archers are bowmen. Oh, there it goes. A small thing is an atom, a car model with a musical name, a sonata, what is that, a Hyundai, I think? And doesn't disturb is let's be, let's alone, and the cause of the moon hitting your eye like a big pizza pie in song is amore. Explorer John Ray, I actually don't know who that is, so I'm glad I got it through crosses. Here we have start of an English auto name, Aston Martin, classic English automaker, and then something it's good to get a hole in, a oh, one, it's good to get a hole in one, there we go, and pitch perfect means you're on key, you're singing on key, you're pitch perfect, and 2016 animated film with songs by Lin-Manuel Miranda would be uh, Moana, and passage blocker, maybe, so a vote against an act passing could be nay. And is that it? Did I get... Oh, no, I didn't fill the whole puzzle in yet. What is this? Uh, what? Oh, what xenophobia is the fear of? Right. Dogs, maybe. Full of anticipation. A gog? Is a gog full of anticipation? Maybe. Let's see. It is. Okay. I wouldn't have thought of... I wouldn't have thought of a gog as being full of anticipation, per se. I think of that as being kind of flabbergasted. But maybe you can use it in that sense as well. That's maybe a slightly tricky cross. All right, I think I maybe found this to be actually, for me, a slightly easier puzzle than Wednesday's puzzle, maybe. And there were, I did notice that in response to yesterday's crossword, there were a number of people who did struggle with some areas of that grid that had some somewhat obscure words and some tough crosses. So uh, I didn't, I found that to be much less the case, I think, today. And we had a fun little, a fun little um, theme, and there wasn't ever anything that uh, there was no revealer. So I was expecting once once we realized that each of these specifically switches O and A, I was expecting that to mean that there would be a revealer that would have something about O and A. You know, there'd be some 
phrase that involves O and A, and it would explain how these things are switched. And that didn't happen. It was just down to us to observe that and carry it through the themes. So we had a Christmas carol becomes a Christmas choral. Vital organ becomes vital argon. Cafe mocha becomes cafe macho. And takes two to tango becomes takes two to tonga. So there we go. Well-constructed theme, even if it doesn't, even if there was no indication about what it means or no sort of additional little resolution about it. Um, that's fine. Figured it out on our own. And so that was actually, you know, that was probably on the gentler side as far as a Thursday theme goes. Often on Thursday, um, we'll have to go a bit farther afield to complete the theme. But in this case, it was it was fairly gentle. And I thought a pretty relatively smooth solving crossword beyond that as well. So let me know. Let me know if you if you found that to be the case or if you I don't know. This gave you some more resistance. Anyway, I did hope I do hope you enjoyed the puzzle. I hope you enjoyed the video, the solve. If you did, please do come back tomorrow for the Friday solve. And the easiest way to do that would be to subscribe right now. It will make it easier easier for you to find the Friday puzzle when it is published. And if you know someone who might enjoy this kind of thing, please do pass it on, either directly with a recommendation or online to your social media network, internet community of choice. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Um, as always, you can follow me on Twitter at The Daily Solve. There, don't forget to check out The Daily Solve Discord chat server if you're interested in um, hanging around with other members of the viewing community of The Daily Solve and solving some of their crosswords in the... Um, uh, Constructor's Corner channel in there, um, especially because I do intend to solve more of those uh, for Patreon subscribers. Um, I might, I might wait a few. I might wait until I'm back home until I do more of those because I do find this remote setup a bit more challenging um, to use, just because of some technical issues that that make it a bit more challenging. So I, I might. Uh, I might save up <laughs> a bunch of things to record for as bonus videos until I'm back home, but but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes over the next few days. Anyway, um, thanks as always uh, for watching to the end of this video. Thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. If that's you, thank you very much. It's, it's very much appreciated. And I hope to see you all back here tomorrow for Friday's puzzle. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.